Okay, so today's webinar is going to be given by myself, Hannah Blacknell. I am the application scientist here at Palin Test. And today we're going to look at why we should test for lead and associated with that, look at what the risks are if we don't manage lead in water, particularly drinking water. After that, we'll have a quick summary of some of the global rules and regulations that surround lead in water, uh, looking at drinking water, but also the rules for water used in renal dialysis and for water released into the environment. Okay, so onto our first section. How does lead get into water? So traditionally, before the dangers of lead poisoning were known, lead was used in everything. It was used in food, makeup, paint and fuel up until the latter part of the 20th century. Here in Europe, lead was the main component used in 18th century cosmetics to achieve that pale ashen look that was so sought after quite the opposite of today's fake tanning culture. The paler your face, the richer you must be, as it meant you never went outside and you got other people to do it for you. These people, although their faces looked distinctly smoother and paler, were slowly poisoning themselves, which caused gray hair, dried out skin, and severe abdominal pain. So lead was removed from makeup products and replaced with something else. And that something else was arsenic, which as we all know now is at least as bad, if not worse. Now, since these regulations have been brought in to eliminate the use of lead in most products, the main source of exposure for humans is through their drinking water. So how does it get into drinking water? Well, the main way is through leaching from pipework. Traditionally, lead has been used across Europe and the US for the pipes in the pipe network uh, that connect your home to the main water network and allow running water in and out of your home. As the water passes through the lead piping, lead contamination particles are washed into the water from the corrosion of the piping itself. As shown on this image, there are many different points at which lead can be introduced into your home's water supply. From the service line that brings water to your home from the mains to the fixtures and fittings that connect plumbing within your home. In order to prevent lead contamination, all this piping and all the fixtures must be replaced with copper pipes or non-contaminating fixtures. This is, as you can imagine, a huge job. So in order to protect people in the interim, it's important to test lead regularly. And if it is present, to put additives into the water supply to prevent the lead from leaching into the water. So in the UK, we add phosphates to the water. This forms a protective layer on the lead pipe to separate it from the water and so stop the water from becoming contaminated. This is especially important in areas with soft water, as in hard water areas, the calcium and magnesium scale deposits that are already in the pipe will provide a little protection. Now, although the main way it gets into the water is through leaching from pipes, there are a few other ways that modern mankind can be poisoned by lead. If the surface water or groundwater is contaminated, this can lead to lead poisoning. Often this would be through industry in the area, but it could also be due to waste disposal as well. Other than that, another way is through eating contaminated foods. The most likely ones to have lead in are fish, but also if you eat organs like kidneys frequently, then there is an increased uh, chance of ingesting lead. And whatever the animal is eaten, you ingest everything they've eaten in their lifetime. So you can get quite a big hit of lead. So there are a few ways that lead can get into the water, but why does that matter? Why should we test for lead? So we know the roots of exposure and now we need to work out why we should care. So lead poisoning is dangerous as the body can never get rid of the lead. So once you've taken it in, it accumulates in your bones and major organs and concentrating and causing severe effects such as increased blood pressure and damage to the kidneys in adults. Lead poisoning is of particular danger to children and fetuses. They are much smaller, and so there is no permissible safe level, or lead will cause damage. In children, the brain is often affected. Effects can be a lower IQ as the brain is damaged as the child grows. There is also evidence showing significant changes in the behavior of those poisoned by lead and marked effects on neurological development as well. There are a number of different regulations for lead in different situations. The most important is that for drinking water, as that is the most common source of human exposure. So there are a couple of different regulations which cover the world. The WHO and DWI both stipulate a limit of 10 ppb. 
In the US, the rules are a bit more complicated. You must take action if there are results above 15 ppb in more than 10% of the customer taps sampled at the time. In Canada, the limit is stricter than anywhere else at 5 ppb. The allowable limits in the environment are often governed by the Water Framework Directive or WFD. This states that the average lead pollution levels is 7.2 ppb in natural waters. However, currently they don't put any maximum allowable limit on it. That's a moving regulation, so we could have something else happen there. Another application where lead levels are heavily restricted is in the renal application. The people receiving renal dialysis are particularly vulnerable as they are already unwell. And also dialysis exposes them to much larger volumes of water than you would normally take in through eating and drinking. The limit according to ISO 23500 from 2019 is 5 ppb. Recently, there's been a tightening of regulations in Canada when it comes to lead. Unlike the rest of the world, the consent limit for Canada is 5 ppb for drinking water. There was a lot of buzz about this change in legislation, especially in school drinking fountains, which is one of the main ways that um, people can ingest lead in the US and in Canada. During the February just gone, our Pale and Test USA team were out training 250 people to use our Chemio heavy metals and they now use the instrument to identify lead contamination of drinking water in schools and take action to prevent the children vulnerable to lead poisoning as a result. So in summary lead can get into the water supply through a number of different routes but most commonly through the pipe network. Lead contamination is dangerous as there is no safe limit any amount of lead will cause harm especially to children. And now that brings us to the close of the show.